Hello and welcome to CMC Markets Trading Outlook for the week of October the 5th, 2015. My name is Colin Sosinski, Chief Market Strategist. Our theme this week is the fallout from the incredibly weak non-farm payrolls and factory orders data on the FOMC, US dollar, gold, currencies and stocks. It's uh, We've had uh, had quite a, a disappointing uh, non-farm payrolls report come out and uh, not only was the number itself well below expectations, uh, but even worse, we had significant downward revisions to private prior months, not only for the headline non-farm number, but also the private sector payrolls. I I, I don't know where they had the uh, seen such a, a wide difference between the uh, this. Um, private payrolls report and the ADP payrolls report but uh, but something's really gone to miss there anyways it's uh, it's looking like the US employment situation is uh, substantially weaker than it had been looking through most of the summer it, what does this mean well we've seen the and oh sorry on top of that we had uh, US factory order numbers came out they were disappointing they were negative below expectations and uh, even removing transport they were negative so and and we had a downward revision to the previous month so there's definite signs of weakening in the US economy Economy. What does that mean? It means that throughout this year where it looked as though the U.S. was flying above all the struggles everywhere else in the world, it looks like the, the weaker you are, you're the weaker economy in the rest of the world, in, in China and in Asia-Pacific countries and in Europe, is, is starting to drag on the United States as well. The uh, So uh, what does that mean? Well, the first thing it means is that the FOMC, I'd been saying, was uh, likely to raise interest rates in October. That's looking increasingly unlikely unless there's some kind of change between now and then. We still have a full month to go, but it's making it a lot more difficult for them to uh, to justify starting to raise interest rates if the economy is starting to head south. Now, the other issue behind that is that I still think December is unlikely for a Fed rate increase. The reason for that is that uh, with it still looks like that could be the month you get a budget change showdown in the United States. The um, A lot of people had been predicting it initially for October with the new fiscal year starting in the States, but the resignation of uh, House Speaker John Boehner last week has uh, the Republicans reorganizing their leadership. It'll take them a little while to do so, so it'll probably be November, December. They could be lining up for a budget showdown at the same time the U.S. hits the debt ceiling. The other thing to remember is that primaries for the presidential election start Febu about February 1st, uh, so in uh, January you start getting into the presidential campaign in a, in a really meaningful way, and I don't think uh, either party would really want to be getting caught in a uh, in a scrap over the uh, over the budget when uh, when they want people focusing on the presidential campaign that could backfire on them. U.S. most government offices in uh, around the world pretty much shut down anyways during uh, during the latter part of December over the holidays, so that would be the uh, the low impact time if you if for people who want to make a point. That being said, that makes it unlikely that for the uh, Fed to raise interest rates. Uh, in December either. So what does that mean? It means we could now be looking towards January potentially for a, uh, a rate hike. And that's only if things turn around. If things continue to slide, it think it could be difficult for the U.S. So uh, what does this mean? Well, we'll take a look at, uh, at the impact on currencies as well as the impact on stocks. I'm going to start with the impact on currencies here and, and the U.S. dollar because there's a, a real issue here that's uh, probably going to be uh, sorted out in the markets over the next few months, and that's this. The U.S. dollar in late 2014 and early 2015 had an absolutely massive rally against everything. As tapering was winding down, people were expecting that not only would the U.S. start to raise interest rates, but that they would start a campaign of interest rates like they had in the last cycle where they raised rates something like a dozen meetings in a row. As it is over the course of this year, it's become increasingly clear that the Fed was not going to go on that kind of a rate hike campaign. They'd be more like the one or two and done and stop and wait and see what happens and so on. But meanwhile, the markets had still priced this in. And, and to my, my feeling was by the end of last year and certainly by the middle of this year, the U.S. had priced in at least one interest rate hike, if not more. And uh, if that's the case, then now that we're seeing these substantial delays to rate hikes, and likely a less aggressive program when they do get around to it, the U.S. dollar might be getting overpriced here. This is also could be one of the reasons why we're starting to see the U.S. economy slow down is the drag on the U.S. dollar uh, on the economy as well. The, the, uh, and, and that can manifest itself in many ways, weaker exports from the U.S., also the... Um, 
uh, less people going to visit the U.S. On, in terms of tourism and, and other things like that. So uh, we are seeing that we're seeing the weakness in the U.S. economy certainly manifest itself. U.S. dollar looking overvalued here, and uh, so I'm looking here first at dollar yen. We had a, uh, a um, pretty much a double top here between June and August, and we are seeing it start to roll over. The RSI shows this momentum has been uh, pointing down for quite some time. Got way overbought in June. We got a substantially lower high in August and a lower high here again. So we're looking at a downtrend in momentum it could be only a matter of time before this starts to roll over as well still hanging around 120 this big support line here is about 118.25 multiple lows and then another uh, multiple low test here around 116 for dollar yen the other interesting thing for dollar yen here is look at this we have a huge increase in uh, in position value for all clients on short positions. That means people going getting out of the U.S. dollar and going long uh, and and getting positive on the yen. So short dollar yen is a bullish yen trade. And look at this huge increase of people getting bearish on the U.S. dollar, getting bullish on the yen. I'll uh, I'll next show the uh, euro dollar. Look at this. Euro dollar, same sort of thing, had been under heavy pressure as the U.S. dollar rallied. It actually, interestingly, bottomed out in February, not that long after the uh, original Greek elections. And then, look, we had a double bottom here in April. And since then, it's quietly been working its way higher. What interests me here, look at this. There's a golden cross here. The 50-day moving average has broken above the 200-day moving average. The death cross, the, uh, the similar flip, was back here in July of 2014 when the uh, 50 went under the 200. And look at the downtrend it had afterwards. This is a bullish signal here. We may still see some sideways base building in the euro US dollar, but generally speaking, it looks like the, the worst of this downtrend's over. This could be starting to rise, which would imply US dollar starting to uh, starting to weaken here. And and if we look over here, the uh, short positions in this were uh, were pretty substantial so people had been short that's gotten trimmed pretty dramatically here uh, as well so people short us euro, short US, euro us dollar was a bearish euro bullish us dollar trade so that means the bulls here are uh, us dollar bulls are heading have been heading for the exits here i'll also uh, highlight a couple of other uh, of the paper currencies and then i'll move on to gold we have here this is uh, cable uh, again, another, by the way, big decrease here in uh, in the U.S. Uh, bulls heading for the exits. Big drop in the short position against uh, against cable here today. And, and look at this. So we had a lower low here, higher low here, positive divergence. We've basically been range bound, but the uh, the worst of the downtrend behind us, we're range bound, essentially consolidating at a higher level on cable. This week we do have a Bank of England meeting. As usual, they're li unlikely to do anything. We could see a little bit of weakness in cable, perhaps relative to some of the other currencies and uh, and the reason for this and I'm just going to actually show it on euro uh, euro pound here euro pound is showing us that the uh, that the euro is starting to gain ground against the pound and look we're not quite there yet heading for a golden cross on on euro pound as well so the pound's also weakening why well me and uh, and certainly a lot of other people have been feeling that yes the uk has been heading for an interest rate hike but they probably wouldn't do it before the fed the uh, the, po the the potential that the fed could go in october had pulled forward the uh, potential uk increase perhaps from mid mid 2016 to early 2016 this may push it back out a bit again so we could see some relative weakness in pound as well. One final thing I wanted to show on dollar yen as I'm moving through the currency markets is this. I talked about the golden cross in the uh, euro dollar. Look at this. The uh, This is heading for a death cross here of the 50-day potentially rolling under the uh, the 200-day moving average. We're also looking at, uh, at some of the other uh, the resource currencies are also starting to show some signs of life. In particular here, we have U.S. dollar CAD is showing signs of uh, of peaking. And we, first of all, we're getting a, a downward momentum signal here. RSI breaking under 50. For the first time, it's been under 50 since June. So this looks like it's starting to roll over here. It had broken out to a, uh, a new high. Negative RSI divergence. That was not confirmed. The And it did not hold either. So we saw a peak here up around 134.50. We're already 
back testing the 50 day around 131.80. There's uh, some support around 131, and then in and around 130 even. Then uh, and then this one here 129.30. So even within this more recent trading range, there is some room for this to come down. Could we get a bounce off of here back up here and form a head and shoulders top? Possibility. And uh, but we are getting some uh, some signs though that this is in a topping process. I'll uh, I'll also show uh, Aussie dollar. And, and then I'll move on to golden stocks. Aussie dollar starting to show some signs of bottoming out here. Look at this. We got really oversold at the beginning of September. And we've got a higher low here. And uh, and that's not quite a positive divergence, but it's certainly uh, encouraging. Double bottom here, dip below 70. We're starting to climb back up that again. This one's got a lot of work to do. Still some first resistance, 70, 80, then closer to 72. This might have to go sideways for a while, but at least it's uh, it's showing some signs of uh, that it's at least starting to bottom out a bit. Gold. Gold I had gotten bullish on after the Fed meeting when they delayed rates, and uh, and since then it has been continuing to work its way upward. We had a rally, came down, supported a higher low, rebounding again on the weak numbers. Now something to remember here, uh, generally speaking, uh, in the, in the past we had seen where dovish, where news that was poor economic news or anything that suggested the Fed might go more dovish had been met with rallies from stocks, and 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 uh, but this time around we're not seeing that. We're seeing that it's being seen as a, as a sign of weakness that the Fed can't raise interest rates as a sign that there's something wrong with the U.S. economy. We're seeing the U.S. dollar start to roll over. We're seeing U.S. stocks rolling over. Gold starting to be on the rebound. It had hit a low here back in July, deeply oversold. It's still recovering from that. Yes, we're, we're seeing a symmetrical triangle so far. This this is suggesting consolidation within a downtrend, but if we ever do break out of this, uh, this trend here, it's around 1.4... 11:46, and and is this uh, you know is this a symmetrical triangle or is this an ascending triangle forming below 11:60? We're uh, we're a bit of a mixed signal here, so we're watching it though. But so far, gold is looking like it wants to work its way upward. And if we do continue to see U.S. dollar weakness and uh, and turmoil, then uh, then we could see a uh, could be moving into a more bullish period for gold. Moving on to stocks now. We've been working our way through the weakest time of the year for stocks for the last six weeks. It runs from mid-August to mid-October. And uh, and certainly this year we've uh, we've seen it as well. We had huge amounts of turmoil uh, in the marketplace back in August. It looks like we're going to see some more uh, turmoil in the short term. But at the same time, there are some encouraging signs that this seasonal sell-off is likely in its, uh, in its later rounds. And uh, I wanted to start off with... Uh, with Chinese markets, even though they're closed today, I just wanted to make a point here, which is this: if we look at the Hang Seng as a as an example, under heavy sell, it had that big rally, a big sell-off. Look at this: a one, two, three potential triple bottom forming in the uh, in the Hang Seng plus positive RSI divergence suggests your downward momentum is slowing. The uh, we'll look at the China H shares as well, and I'll just highlight here quickly. One, two, three. You could call that a triple bottom. You might be able to call that a head and shoulders bottom. The point is it's looking like a bottom's forming. Let's look at copper as well. Look at this double bottom forming in copper. A lot of the things related to the to this weak China story that and, and, and the signs. Yeah, China's not doing great, but it's not totally going off a cliff either. So uh, the market sell off in, in China and China sensitive markets and they're also seeing the double bottom in copper. We just, I showed you the double bottom in the in the Aussie dollar uh, as well. So we're uh, and I'll just show the uh, Australian stock market as well. Look at this kind of not quite a double bottom, but uh, we are looking at some kind of base bill building uh, under, and consolidation underway there as well. I uh, also wanted to show the uh, the Japanese market here. This one's quite intriguing. If we look at uh, at this at the uh, the Nikkei here, look at this. We didn't quite have a double bottom. We've had even something bigger, a big bear trap washout. The only market that actually took out its August low. It didn't last very long, and bang, came right back higher. And then look, three green candles to follow it. So that's encouraging as well. So it looks as though a lot of the markets that led the initial decline, and look at how this one went off the cliff back in August. Like wow. The markets that led the decline in, in, in Asia Pacific and uh, and even in Europe, if we look at the DAX as a uh, as an example here. Look at this double bottom in the DAX too, and uh, and it's had ch it's had its chances in the last week or so to uh, to break this ninety three thirty has not done so, 
and uh, and here RSI is kind of close to oversold and starting to suggest downward pressure easing. So the seasonal sell-off in most markets looks like it's getting close to an end. We're getting we've been oversold, we've been washed out. We're showing signs of base building. We're getting good retests. So the technical picture for a lot of more indices around the world is still looking pretty good. But the U.S., however, trailed on the way down, and it may have one more final flush bef and, and and clean out of the weak hands before it can stabilize as well this month. And this this weak news from the from the uh, non-farm payrolls and factory orders may just be the catalyst for it. So I'm going to show the uh, U.S. 31st. And we're seeing it came down. Now, we've actually had a bit of a rebound, which is encouraging uh, how, uh, after an initial uh, sell-off. But we still have the potential for a, a retest of this uh, August lows. Now, for the U.S., I'm not convinced that we'll necessarily see these uh, these extreme lows that we had. This was a down open, and we had a, a, a rebound uh, over the course of the day where it had opened, been slammed, and then come back. So I, I don't think we'll necessarily see these intraday lows. I'm more interested in seeing how the U.S indices perform around these closing lows. So we've got the Dow holding 16,000 to 1630 support here. So far, so good. If it breaks it, this is in and around 15,700, 15,750. Let's take a look at the S&P as well. S&P is actually quite interesting as well because it's actually tested its uh, August lows, the closing lows, in here in and around 1870 to 75, retested it here and is kind of working its way upward. And even here in the post-payroll uh, post slam, it, uh, it has uh, found some support at a higher low. So things are not looking too bad for the S&P uh, either. The other one I want to just take a peek at here is the NASDAQ. And we'll show here, like the uh, like the Dow. Interestingly, it has had a bounce here. It did get some weaknesses holding. So far, so good. Uh, if we do see uh, 4080 fail, then you could see a retest. So this is 4,000. Look, the August lows and a big round number here. And uh, but so far, things are starting to look reasonably encouraging for the Nasdaq. So if we're going to see any more weakness in U.S. markets, we'll probably see it over the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, stocks do seem to be showing some signs of uh, of starting to stabilize. The uh, latter part of October into November, December, historically have been uh, more positive times of the year for stock markets. The, the second half of October this year could remain choppy with the speculation over the uh, the will they or won't they on, on the Fed could drag at least into the, uh, the latter part of October. So it does look like we're still seeing some active markets for trading. Uh, stock markets are showing some signs of bottoming, but the big thing really is the U.S. dollar looks like it's topping out. It looks like that huge rally it had on, on, on speculation of a more hawkish Fed looks is starting to increasingly look like it was overdone, and that's where you could see the vulnerability, which could make uh, could be setting up for some turnarounds in in some of the paper currencies uh, and gold. The uh, looking at the news flow this week, it's relatively uh, quiet as is normal in the week after the uh, after the uh, non-farm payrolls. But we often get our China data. China data has been pushed off because they have holidays uh, through much of this week. So uh, we kick off earlier in the week. We have an Australia interest rate hike. No changes widely expected. You never know the RBA could go one, but the uh, the bottoming in the R R R Aussie dollar is suggesting that uh, probably not. The Australian trade balance is also out. Tuesday, we get Canada and U.S. trade balance. U.S. trade balance could be particularly important and may actually get more attention in the markets than usual. The reason was because uh, during the week that's just passed, there was one day the uh, Atlanta Fed has a GDP indicator that tracks, uh, makes makes a GDP forecast based on a, on a series of U.S. indicators. And, and one trade in early advanced trade indicator that... Uh, is not really widely reported. I haven't been able to find it. Uh, it caused them to cut their, their GDP uh, forecast for the third quarter in half. So either something's gone funny with their models or there could be something big in the in the trade numbers. So we'll be keeping an eye out uh, for that. Uh, also, uh, Wednesday morning in Japan, Tuesday night local time, we do get a, uh, a Bank of Japan meeting. Again, there's no change uh, expected, but Japan has been struggling. We'll see if it's any change there or if they start to hint towards something else. Uh, as 
I mentioned earlier, Thursday we have a UK interest rate decision. Um, they're likely to stay on hold for a while now. Plus, though, we do get uh, minutes from the last Fed meeting in September and minutes from the last ECB meeting. So those could uh, could attract some attention as well as people try to figure out, well, how close were these were they at the Fed to uh, to raising rates in September? A lot of people were, uh, were have come out since and said they were iffy and it could have gone either way. So, uh, so oh, and Friday, I could have a big day for trading in Canada. We have the uh, Canada Employment Report, and uh, that's often a, a, a big one. Of course, it didn't come out uh, this week because it's a little early in the month for, uh, for Canada, but uh, next Friday, people are still trying to figure out, is Canada rebalancing? Is, uh, is the, uh, the lower loony helping out the rest of the economy? It's getting pretty clear that the, weak, the stronger U.S. dollar has been hurting their economy, so uh, we'll see if it starts to come back around the other way for Canada. As I've shown you, uh, CAD looks like it's bottoming out. U.S. dollar CAD topping, CAD dollar bottoming out around 75 cents. So uh, throughout the week, there are some uh, reports, and, uh, and it does look like we could get uh, another active week for trading.